All right, let's talk about something a little odd, a little weird. How many voices do you have? This is the one that gets everybody going. This one's really funny, right? So, if I, if I do my famous breath down my back, I can do a preset, if I want, and I go, ah, and now I can do what's called mezza voce. Mezza voce means, does just mean softer. It means half voice. So I'm going to give you half of my voice suddenly by switching gears on my brain. I'll, if you watch, I want to change the thing. So I'll go, right? So that's two voices. Now, are there any more? So what if I do the splitting process again, right? So I do a mezza voce of the mezza voce, the half of the half. So then I'll put a quarter, I don't know what that is. I'm not very good at arithmetic, so we'll see. But I'm gonna take a breath. You guys have to do a lot of rehearsals, especially over orchestras, especially where you're supposed to do all your acting and everything. If you can find that third voice, it's been called bravura voice, coloratura voice, and fioritura voice. It's also been called ridiculous and don't do it at all. It's also called the marking voice, this third one. So if I go, let's say I go, uh, I'm rehearsing Tosca, let's say, and I go, ah, and I'm just marking, and that sound, for some reason, will go over the orchestra and the conductor can hear you. Now, if you're really clever and you're really smart, you start using that a lot when the orchestra's playing, and the conductor thinks that it sounds, he can hear you, he thinks you're really singing, so he will start telling the orchestra, take it down, wait a minute, that's too loud over here, that, don't play forte here, play mezzo, don't play mezzo forte, they play mezzo piano. And he starts taking the whole orchestra down, right? And meanwhile, you've been rehearsing the whole time, and that voice like that, see? So I'm going, ah, 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 that one, see, I'm like that. You sing a million notes like that. <laughs> if you're singing every night, that's what you do in rehearsals in the daytime. Could you save the voice? Now, when the performance comes, he's got the orchestra all rehearsed and they're all down. And guess what you do? Guess how you sing? If you want to really just cover that orchestra and sound big. The only problem with that is, if you do that, everybody comes and says, Oh my gosh, you're a Helden tenor. You're a real dramatic tenor. But you're not. <laughs> because all you've done is sing over an orchestra that has been subdued, that is taken down by half. And of course, if I only have to fight over half volume with the orchestra, man, I can sing all kinds of big stuff and still be heard. See? So... If I'm going to use this third voice, let's call it, see, that's my marking voice. So I go, Now you can hear that. A lot of guys think that is the voice and they take that sound and crescendo it. So I go, Hear that? Ah, 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 You'll have to figure out for yourself what really happens because you know you talk to the throat doctor with this stuff and let him watch your vocal cords while you're doing something. They go, oh my God, you're not doing anything. We can't see anything happening. Well, isn't that the point? Isn't the point to be throatless, jawless, and tongueless? I tell everybody about Dame Ava Turner who sang the first tour and in England. And she came to the Metropolitan Opera when I was in the school there. I was in the school they called the Catherine, oh, I forgot, no, Catherine Long School. And, uh, I mean, Shirley Verrett was there and Justina Diaz. There were some wonderful young singers there at that time. I hope it included me. I don't know. But anyway, uh, she used to preach in the master class when she came to give it. She was like 75 or 76 years old. And she just preached this invisible throat, invisible jaw, invisible tongue. That was her mantra. You know, she said, if you can't do anything up here, you have to do it somewhere else. Well, okay, I'm going to do nothing here. So I go, ah. I 
Mike and Mark all day. In van, in van, nascondo la mia vera tortura. What about the middle one? What about the second voice? Ah, let's see. Ah, there it is. In van, in van, nascondo la mia vera tortura. Well, what the heck do you do with the full voice? So I go. You know where you can tell the difference? In the back of the theater. You get in the back of the theater, and one of them will be round and pretty and sort of mellow sounding. Some people like that better. Then you're going to do spinto repertoire, or some of this lyrical spinto repertoire in the more dramatic sections, and all of a sudden you realize that placement is not very effective. You can get covered by the orchestra, or it's very limited in how, how, how much you can sing. And you've got to sing effortless, guys. You're not going to make it through these monster operas. I mean, I did uh, Queen of Spades of Tchaikovsky. It's like singing Tosca five or six times. I did Meister Singer. That's five and a half hours. That's like singing Queen of Spades five or six times. <laughs> you know, what do you ask Mary Nielsen, what do you need to be a great Wagner singer? She said, a good pair of shoes. So the whole idea is if you're going to do this, you have to find a way to survive over a long career. I always think of Helge Rosmenge, the famous Danish tenor, and he sang seven days a week, three times a day. He rehearsed every morning, made records every afternoon, and sang a performance every night. And he sang big and light and everything, and everything from big to little and little to big, and never had one vocal problem singing seven days a week for 55 years. And I said, to what do you attribute that? He said, yoga. I said, yoga? He said he did yoga three hours a day, an hour and a half in the morning before he went to work, and an hour and a half at night when he came home. He was also divorced eight times. The women all left. They couldn't live with him when he would come home late at night from the theater, having sung a performance, and then he still had to do an hour and a half of yoga every night. He said it was never their fault. Never. It was always my fault. I understood that. But it let him be one of the great historical singers, and they called him the German Caruso because he wasn't a German, he was a Dane, made his career mainly in Berlin and Vienna, right? And uh, was he, but he, I mean, I, I studied with him, I met him as a singer, he was a colleague, we met in Munich, singing in Munich, and uh, you know, he walks in, he's singing, his voice was like a, a black house. It reminded me of a house in the middle, uh, surrounded by sky, painted black. The voice was just maybe metal black, metallic black. It was unbelievable, indescribable voice, right? Uh, so when you do these things, what is it these guys are doing? How do they sing? Rosfanger was the one that taught me these three voices. He said, if you do these, you can rehearse, you can sing you know, a lyric part one night, a dramatic part the next night. So let's say I'm doing, uh, whatever, Otello. And I go, breathe. Then I go, which voice is that? Me? What if I split it? In other words, use my metta voice, my half voice. So I go, Still works. Still do it. Still take all the notes. What if I'm going to mark this rehearsal? Then what do I do? So I go, Ah, is that one? So everybody thinks I'm crazy, but that's all right. I did survive. I sang 62 roles for 40 years, and uh, I must say I'm still, I'm 80 years old now. I was 80 in March. Today is June the 17th. 19 to 2018. So I've been 80 years old since since March 15th. So I'm just having fun. I'm so glad I can still make a noise uh, other than a digestive noise. So uh, if you want to do this, you have to have a leaning method. This is the problem. You've got to have what Lily Lehman called the breath stop. You have to go, and the breath must stop. So I breathe in. That's the inward stop. And then I'll go out. And that's the outward stop. It's called the outward one is called the Valsalva maneuver. Valsalva maneuver. The inward is called the Miller maneuver or the reversed 
Valsalve maneuver. So uh, if, I, if I do the Valsalve maneuver, go, then I relax my throat and I maintain this attachment of the breath here, right? And once I have that, I can, I can use my voice different ways. So I go, or I can reverse it. You decide which voice you want to use. You got big, big, I've sung a lot in big theaters. Uh, if you sing, by big, I mean uh, big spaces. I've sung outdoors, I've sung in circus tents, I've sort of sung everywhere. And I remember I did an Aspen, and their huge tent they have, I think it is an official big top, uh, big circus, but the big circus tent, right? And we did uh, a piece by Penderecki called Utrenia. It had 166 players in the orchestra, and 60 some odd of them were brass players. Now, you're supposed to get up and sing that, right? And it was a big piece, long piece, and we didn't have microphones. So what do I do to be heard? <laughs> Let's forget everything else. Just what about being heard? Something simple, right? So in rehearsals, hmm, what did I do? I did my trick, which is I rehearse with my small voice, see? And then I would let it out a little bit in the performances. And frankly, I don't remember any of it now to even demonstrate it. <laughs> right? But I remember having to come in on high notes and I'd go, huh. No problem, see? Ah, middle voice. Ah, full voice. Now, people can think of that whatever they want. All I know is I'm 80 years old and I'm still singing. Are you? I teach this to some people, and um, sometimes they think I'm crazy too. That's all right. As long as you sing and your voice stays healthy, and I've got a healthy voice. <laughs> right? People come to me all the time with nodules on their vocal cords, bowed vocal cords. Some people have bleeding arteries in their throat, uh, or, you know, veins, or a lot of popped capillaries, things like that. Uh, polyps all over their voices just from constant abuse, right? And uh, they're all singing today. One of them came to me 30 years ago with, uh, with a polypoid polyp on a vocal cord. She's still singing, you know? And she's a cantor and she sings a lot and teaches all day also. And the voice is still fine, right? Got another one is 60, whatever she is, 69. She sings uh, Isolde and Brunhilde and all these monster parts and she's still singing, no, no vocal problems. So uh, I got convinced by older singers when I was a young singer, and I was lucky, uh, I don't know why, it seemed to be my fate and my destiny, but I was exposed to some of the greatest singers, and in, 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 in really, historical singers, like Lawrence Melchior, Hedger Rosefinger, Richard Tucker, Mario Del Monaco. Do you realize people, with, the, with people that gave me, actually gave me lessons? I mean, really, you know? But with that, I saw with Olga Reese, who sang a lot of dramatic soprano music from the time she was just a young girl. I think in Tbilisi and Georgia and Russia, she, she made her debut when she was like, you know, like, 22 or 23 and sang Aida. Now, people, uh, when I meet these people, they're all 70. And I was like 21, 22. So that was already, when you think how far back they were trained to sing. I asked uh, Giovanni Martinelli when he was 57, I was about 22. And I said, what did your teacher tell you? And, uh, you know, how he, he said, he said, my teacher said, qui respirare, here breathe. And qui postare, and here put the voice, right? So Richard Tucker said to me, breathe behind you and sing in front of you. Well, what were they all talking about when you're a young singer? What the heck are you talking about? So some of these guys were smart and they would demonstrate and they knew what they were doing. Then when you get into the ones, you know, Helga Rosfang had a doctorate in chemistry 
Melchior said, uh, Melchior being a great historical singer himself, he said it was the greatest voice he ever heard, first of all, Roswang, but he was also the smartest person he ever met. He said the guy had a doctor in chemistry, he had a scientific mind, he approached everything like a scientist, and he's the one <laughs> that, that was using the harmonic voice. If you want to get somebody, some of your string players, a violinist, to play what's called a harmonic tone on the violin, it's sort of a half touch. I don't know how to do it, but I've, had, I've heard plenty of them do it, and I've had them show it to me. If I go, ah, ah, ah see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm engaging, ah, 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 my breath. But what if I only use half of, half of the, uh, half of the, it's like all I want is the edges of my voice to vibrate. So I go, ah, 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 ah. If I staccato, and I go, ah, 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 those are called martellati, they're hammered notes. So if I really do a, a staccati, I do this, now, which voice is that? If I go, I can sing on a, on a, on a martellato type staccato point by increasing compression. When you really get into spinto voices, then they wheezel. They go, and they really put the pressure. I've got a video with uh, Joshua uh, uh, Quesada, and he's got a very high lyric tenor, and I didn't want to do much of that compression with him because it tends to, uh, first of all, it takes away the beauty of a round, beautiful, light lyric voice, but it can also be dangerous. You need uh, the, the right kind of vocal cord to do that. So it's usually sopranos and tenors, funnily enough, um, not other voice types so much. And let's say my natural voice is, uh, say, a lirico spinto. Well, then I have to be able to do both. So I go, Quanto bello, quanto e cara. And I just go, ha. Ah. And I'm just sighing behind here. And people say, oh, your voice isn't quite right for that music. It's a little bit too, ah. I said, okay, fine, I won't sing it. You know, but I, I had a lot of high notes when I was young. And I did Rosen Cavalier and uh, Matteo and Arabella. And I did all those parts of Dalva Schoen and Lulu, all those uh, somewhat modern parts that were extremely high. So if I do the more, uh, the, the more dramatic, let's say I'm doing spinto music. Now, what, what do I do? So I go, same breath stop, same sigh method. I can also drop my sigh way down on my abdomen if I want a fatter tone. See, if I'm doing Otello, I go, Ola per sempre, addio, santa memoria. Well, why not? When you do that, all you're trying to do is make a big fat sound that'll get over that big orchestration. And uh, the problem is you might impress somebody or they might like it. So, oh, you're no Tello, you're a dramatic tenor. We want to hire you for Tannoy's and Tristan and Siegfried. I said, no, 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 I'm not. Believe it or not, I'm just, uh, 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 I'm basically a lady called voice that's reinforcing a little bit, and I have to do a, little more, a few more scoops. It's very hard to nail those notes. That's why I admired Richard Tucker so much. He can nail the heck out of a power note, and it would not move or bounce or be restricted in any way. Just marvelous, really marvelous. So when you, a lot of you have voices that have this possibility. Some of you have very light, leery voices, and you shouldn't mess with it. You stick with the lighter you know, the second or third voice. Some guys have great big, I've got one true Helden tenor that studies me now. He's, in, he's a German, he's in Stuttgart. He's got a voice when he says, ah, the whole, the whole room shakes, the whole room vibrates. Great big, huge voice. Is there any point in teaching him uh, second, third voice? You know what you do? You teach him the second voice so he can sing mezzo voce. Because in second act of Tristan, that whole duet for about 45 minutes is just full of mezzo voce. So if I do, uh, if I do Siegfried, I use the first voice. Ha! Right? Ein Schritt verhieß mir der Vater, ich fand es in höchster Not. Waffen aus fiel ich in feindes Haus, seine Rache fand raste ich hier. And then I switch. Ein Weib sah ich, wann ich und hier, ein Reif, weil wir sind zurück und reißen, schärft mein Herz. In other words, there's music where you're gonna, where, you, where literally, right in the same aria or same scene, you can switch back and forth if you have the, first of all, the right kind of voice, and second of all, the right kind of technique. 
So this is just something that uh, ought to be out there, I think, for somebody that, that uh, is having trouble. They get hooked into singing with one attachment, with one intensity, and they get stuck and can't do anything. It works also on the small side. I mean, I, I've had several singers, uh, most of them are sort of ski slope singers. Ah, and they get locked into the lighter voice. And they end up singing like that. Ah, I, I come to me and he was singing, oh, la, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, shake the all this loose. Take a deep breath behind you. And, that's, and then sing here. And he went, oh, la, And I said, which one's easier? He said, oh, no, that one's easier. Sure, and it's about 10 times bigger too, especially in back of the theater. So uh, there's all kinds of ways, guys, to uh, get into some music. The danger is that you hear, make the big one. It's a dramatic tenor. Well, you've got to make sure that if you are being evaluated by anybody, you've got to make sure you show the other possibilities, unless it really is your voice. But those big, heavy voices are so rare, it's, it's almost something that we don't have to worry about. Uh, I'm so old school in my training that if they come to me, uh, I, I start here and say throat, throat, no throat, no throat, no tongue, no jaw. It's like this. Now, you've got to figure out another thing. So you breathe, and you go, oh, oh. Now, where's my staccato after I breathe? See? I breathe way down on my lower back. Oh, 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 oh. Now, what if I say crescendo, de crescendo, your staccato? So I go, oh, 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 So I'm looking for my tiniest, weeniest sound that I can make. I go. What am I doing? Am I marking? Am I singing mezzo voce? I know from experience that sound carries like a rocket. If you get a lyric section where the orchestra's not blowing you off, you better say, oh my God, such a beautiful round lyric voice, wonderful. Well, anyway, enough confusion for one day. You know, you guys can always write me questions. I do, really do try to answer everybody. It's very hard sometimes. Some of the questions are a little bit weird. <laughs> and so I have to think about them for a few weeks, a month, or for a few years before I can figure out how to answer some of them. Because I'm, I'm not being aloof and I'm not being, uh, you know, hard to get or anything like that. Uh, the whole point of this is to help people. And if you don't want it, then, you know, reject it. You know, that's all right. You won't hurt my feelings. I'm still doing it. I'm 80 years old. I'm still singing. Can you sing? Simple. You know, can your teacher sing? You know, I mean, I've had people win every competition in the world doing this. I mean, really, they're singing all over the world with these I, crazy ideas. But I didn't make them up. I got these ideas from great singers. What do you do when Richard Tucker says to you, breathe behind you, sing in front of you? What do you do? Then you bump into another fabulous historical singer and he says, qui respirare e qui postare, right? So then you go to someone like, like Lawrence Melchior. And Melchior, Melchior, first time I sang for him, he, I sang Lohengrin, which was the heaviest thing I'd sing that time, trying to win some money in the Hilton Tenor Prize. He says, you are not a Hilton Tenor. You are a lyric tenor. You must breathe. Breathe. You must breathe. How? How? He said, breathe here. Big, big, big. He said, and then sing here. Small, small, small. I said, what about here? He says, oh, no. This it does not exist. This does not exist. This, we don't, we don't, no, no, we don't use this. You know? Now imagine you're some kid, 20, 22 years old, I might have been even a little younger when I met him, and uh, I mean, what am I supposed to think? Well, what I got from these guys, I got it in my book, uh, all these big interviews, they all, they all were nagging about breathing in the lower back and stopping the breath somewhere. You can either stop it by sighing, and it leans down, and it, and it obeys the principle of appoggio, leaning. Right? You can use a breast stop. Huh. Right? That's Lily Lehman. Tetrasini said, lean your breath up. First, she said, breathe in the lower rear. The first drop of air goes in the lower rear quadrant of the lungs. And then you take the breath and fill it from bottom to top. And then you lean the breath up against your sternum like you lean a ladder against the wall. So if I do that, fill it up to here, lean the breath. 
Ah, it's another one of those. It's it's almost a sigh method. Ah, if I stay there and lean, I get ah. You notice I'm not changing the shape of my mouth. I'm not lifting my soft palate. I'm not covering. I'm not modifying the vowel. I'm not even, oh, this guy, oh my God. Boy, when I was in Italy, I coached with uh, Capo Gagliani, the most famous coach in, in Milano, and coached at La Scala, and everybody, most famous Italian coach. And, and he said, oh, no, 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 pass the voice, no, no, pass the voice. Never, never pass the voice. And you know what we call, you mean cover? No, no, cover, no, no, cover, no, nothing, no, do the nothing, do the nothing. Well, Caruso said in his book, never change the shape of your mouth when you go to a high note. So that means I breathe, and I go, ah, oh. now look at that shape. Ah, <laughs> to warm up to get those extreme notes, but I, just, I, I probably still have them if I'd work at them. But we'll see. Oh, how are you today? I'm fine. How are you today? I'm fine. There's nothing to it if you know where your breast stop is. Oh, how are you today? How are you today? It's really nothing to get them up there if you had it. And most of the really good voices I've ever met have everything and a lot more. <laughs> Some of them a lot more. All right. I hope that helps everybody. And, uh, as I said, if you have a question with these, some of these crazy ideas, they're not so crazy. Just look back and see what the big boys were doing and the big girls. Do you think about Joan Sutherland bending over, breathing in her lower back, and singing with this staccato technique? <laughs> and that's what she, I, I spent the whole day shoe shopping with her one time. And all I did was pick her brains about technique, and that's where we, that's where we ended up every time. Breathe in your lower back and do staccatos here until you have your... You're lean, organized in your mind. You stay there. Then you sing everything on a staccato point. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Bye.